Good morning. The House Transportation Committee for Tuesday, March 21st, 2023 is now in session. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Representatives Beck, Burkhart, Butler, Campbell, Camper, Carr, Cochran, Darby, Davis, Glenn, Grills, Harris, Hazelwood, Hicks, Marsh, Martin, Powell, Powers, Rudd, Russell, Towns, Whitson, Wright, Vice Chairman Vital, Chairman Howell. Here. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Any personal orders from the committee before we look at our calendar? Seeing none, we want to welcome some visitors uh, with us today. We have the Tennessee Public Transportation Association. Raise your, raise your hand so the committee can see how many visitors we have. We're glad to have you with us today. Really glad to have you with us. You perform a great service to the public, and we appreciate it. Members, we have a fairly short calendar today, uh, 12 bills on the calendar. But before we get into the first one on the calendar, let's uh, roll back to item number 10. And item number 10, House Bill 685, has been rolled one week. That brings us back to the front of the calendar. And we have item number one, House Bill 1278 by Speaker Johnson. You're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 1278 comes to me from Speaker Sexton. And this legislation cha changes the standard of passing the general visual test for non-commercial non vehicles from 2040 visual acuity to 2050 Vis visual acuity or better uh, they still must prove that they have the ability to read road signs and uh, have knowledge of the traffic laws and pass the uh, driving test and that's what it does mr chairman you've heard the explanation members from the sponsor any questions Question has been called on the bill. All in favor of sending House Bill 1278 to finance, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Your bill goes to finance. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee. Thank you. Item number two, House Bill 402 by the illustrious Leader Lambert. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. He, he says that just because I was on the road all the way in saying I wished I had a choice lane trying to get down here on time today. <laughs> so thank you, Chairman. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This very simple bill. It just takes the, uh, it normalizes the penalties on driving without a license or driving on a revoked license or suspended license and makes it a B misdemeanor. You've heard the explanation from the sponsor. Any questions? Question has been called on the bill. Without objection, we're voting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Leader, your bill goes to finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you. Item number three by Representative Keesling. Chairman Keesling, I apologize. Uh, you recognize, sir. Good morning, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, I believe we have an amendment to put on the bill. Well, we, Chairman, we do, and I, I um, and I apologize to you and the committee. I just discovered this morning that also we've got an amendment coming out of, of the Senate as well. So uh, procedurally, I don't know. Uh, Folks, how to do we substitute and conform to what they've got? Um, I'll turn to you to, for some leadership here on on this one. Yes, we do have a uh, an amendment, and that, of course, that amendment uh, is fifty eight twenty two. If that fifty eight twenty two is, is what I correct? have, and legal counsel tells me we need to put this one on. Uh, well, we have a motion and a second okay. on the amendment. All in favor of adding the amendment to the bill, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Amendment is on the bill, sir. Okay. You're recognized. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, let's, let's back up a couple of years, members, to 21. And at that time, the, we passed a law to require TDOT to, to issue permits to local law enforcement to post license readers, LPRs, on state right, right of ways to help track criminals, kidnappers, and, and any other bad actors. Well, the bill, this bill streamlines that process to make it easier for our local law enforcement to stop crime. It opens the process up to allow them to choose a camera vendor. And right now it's been Motorola 
that meets their needs and mandates that uh, vendor is NDAA compliant. And that, that acronym, of course, is the National Defense Authorization Act. I, it, I'll say this, Chairman and members, that, that this really isn't anything to do with surveillance, although it's being taken out, I think, uh, in that posture, but uh, it, it really isn't. And of course, if we need to, uh, Chairman, it'd be up to you. We could get uh, our legal to go out, you know, to explain that. But with that, I'll, I'll entertain any questions. Okay. Uh, any uh, objection to hearing from legal? Anyone <laughs> want to hear from legal? Okay, let's go out of session and get an explanation from legal. We're out of session. Legal, you recognize. Joel Hayes, Office of Legal Services. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what exactly are you looking for me to explain well, again? Again, I just wanted to make sure, uh, assure the, the members, um, Joel, that there's no surveillance uh, when it comes to uh, in, in that. Sure. sure. Okay. <clears throat> In that uh, respect. Right. Uh, the use of these uh, cameras are, you know, for the use of cameras on these roads are limited to uh, smart way cameras and for, you know, traffic flow, uh, congestion, things like that. Um, but for these particular cameras, they are limited to uh, aiding in criminal investigations or searches for missing or endangered persons. Uh, they cannot be used for... Uh, um, enforce or monitor state or local traffic violations or issue citations. Exactly. That's what, that's where, and I appreciate, thank you. That's, Any other questions for legal while we're out of session? Representative Grills. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this may not be necessarily for legal, but um, who would be in charge of uh, harboring and possessing that data as it's, uh, as it's received on a daily basis? Uh, it speaks to the fact that uh, the, these cameras are being installed and operated by local law enforcement. Follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it would be uh, local law enforcement that would be in charge of the databases that are built on a daily basis. And then at that point, they, uh, if, when a person is being searched for or looked for, they would have a warrant and they would go ask for that, ask for, uh, that data or how, how would that work? Uh, well, it, it's possible that um, local law enforcement in the installation and operation of these cameras could contract with uh, an entity to store the data because uh, um, on later on page two, it refers to the manufacturer and custodian of any data collected. And then it basically uh, outlines the, the, comply, the requirements that they must comply with regarding that, uh, the storage of that data. Any other questions for legal? All right, we will go back in session. Any questions for the sponsor? Representative Cochran, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you to the sponsor. I, I know uh, it, he and I have discussed this, this bill a little bit. I, I know that there's no malintent with, with this particular legislation. And certainly, I know no, uh, no, no malintent by the sponsor. There's no more, uh, more freedom-loving uh, free, freedom loving representative than, than the sponsor of this bill. I just, it makes me always makes me a little bit nervous when we expand surveillance. And I, and again, not to, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist. I know, I know that this is that the intentions of this particular piece of legislation are, are, are noble, right? We want to, we want to, we want to, if there's a criminal, we want to be able to find that person, but it should, what makes me nervous about it is the, is the precedent that it sets where we, I, I mean, just, um, where, where we're kind of authorizing yet another law enforcement agency to expand surveillance capabilities of vehicles on the road. Um, and, and so I guess I just wanted to express that concern. That, that's, that's why I, I, I would be a no on this one, is, ju is just that precedent of further expansion of, of, of surveillance. And again, I know it would not be, uh, there would be no negative intent with this particular bill, but it, again, it's, I think it's just kind of that next step of expansion. And that, that's what makes me a little bit nervous. And you have represent your record now. I, I, want to I respond? have no comment. Okay. <laughs> I don't like surveillance either. So, Chairman <laughs> Whitson. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And 
Chairman Keasley, thank you for bringing this legislation. Um, you know, correct me, but cities already can put cameras out and store data on their non-state highways in their municipalities, correct? That That's my understanding, sir, yes. So we're not, really not expanding the scope of this other no. than allowing it to be put on state highways inside municipalities, correct? That's correct. And in addition, it also opens it up for uh, more uh, better bidding, better uh, better costs for, for our cities and, and our, uh, for our city and municipalities. And this would help us find folks for silver alerts quickly and um, and also, my understanding, uh, we had a tragedy here in Nashville a few years ago where a young nurse was shot and killed on her way to work. And uh, and it's been reported that the police could have found the the uh, the criminals within just hours and rather than days if they had uh, use of license plate readers. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also in Memphis, we had two incidents where yeah. uh, criminals killed innocent people, and they were. Uh, because of license plate readers, they were readily identified, correct? That's correct. And so if somebody's running around on their spouse, uh, these <laughs> license plate readers cannot be used to track them, correct? That is my understanding. Okay. Great. Uh, I thank you for this legislation, and I think it will help uh, protect the public and uh, also protect the privacy of individuals uh, as they tr uh, move about our cities and highways. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Representative Davis, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman Keesling, for bringing this legislation. Um, I am supportive of this, and that is because in Knoxville, we're kind of in a unique spot in that the interstate system, you got I-40 and you got I-75, so everything north and south, you know, it comes through Knoxville. And so my concern is, is this helps to ensure that if we have human trafficking or drug trafficking, that we have those law enforcement agencies have the ability to track those vehicles because they go across state lines. And so law enforcement from other states do call in to law enforcement here in our state and ask for assistance. And so that's very important. So I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next up is uh, Chairman Russell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, sponsor, for bringing this legislation forward. And just to follow up on this, this is, uh, is it fair to say this is not expanding the surveillance, just as the uh, my colleague said about uh, um, the camera choices, it just gives local law enforcement the availability to um, look at different options and whenever they're purchasing the camera systems. I've uh, received numerous calls about how expensive it is to buy these cameras that are currently only uh, one choice for these departments and this would give them the opportunity to buy these cameras at a cheaper rate but does not expand the surveillance for them and ultimately just save local government's money is that correct that's correct chairman russell and and uh maybe most of you didn't uh, have time to review the senate uh as this thing as this bill was presented in the senate but that's exactly uh, the highlight of, of that uh, presentation or the introduction of this during their discussion on it. Yes, sir. Follow up. Go ahead. And I just again want to say thank you for bringing this, and I think it will save the cities and counties a lot of money. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Representative Towns. Chairman, thank you. Chairman, I have a question. I, I guess it might be for legal uh, as it relates to cameras, period. And I'm wondering if we could uh, get legal answer to this question for me, sir. I have two. First one is, um, we know that we're looking for this uh, scenario. We know we're looking for somebody. Somebody violated the law. So we're looking for that particular person. We catch that particular person or people with the camera system. Incidentally, there is something else that uh, the cameras caught that was a crime that was committed However, they were not looking for them. How is that used? Is that, is that, do we have probable cause to, to deal uh, and to use that evidence or what happens in that case, uh, legal? Any other questions? No. Okay. Uh, any other questions? 
Representative, Representative Towns, do you have another question? Yeah, just ask legal a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I no didn't problem. Need, we'll go out of session. Please, please. I was talking to legal and mischief no I got request. You, I apologize. And as such, Representative Towns, would you mind repeating that uh, <laughs> <laughs> question? <laughs> I thought I was talking to legal. <laughs> but let me let me do it again. Not, not a problem. But as I stated, let's say there is an incident has a crime has the alleged crime has, you know, been reported. And so with the camera system on the highway or throughout the city, where have, where have you on the highway in this case, we apprehend that take the suspect. Meanwhile, during that same time, uh, there is something else that the cameras caught that was a crime. Do we have probable cause to use that material or not? Can that second person be prosecuted, second incident be prosecuted as well? Uh, Representative Towns basically says that uh, these cameras can be used for, to aid in criminal investigations and searches for missing or endangered persons. And part of my understanding is the way these cameras uh, work, especially the license plate readers, is that uh, they can look and look back at uh, when uh, certain cars have, pers uh, have passed certain uh, points along the camera system and so they can trace the route of the vehicle. I'm not sure exactly about real-time capability of, and monitoring of these uh, cameras for uh, criminal violations. Follow-up, sir? Certainly. So, and I'm not understanding the system totally. I thought that it, could, it had the capability of doing more than just capturing a license plate. I thought it could see and record something if it happened, say if something was happening in that car. So it does not have the capability of recording what's going on in the car, only the license plate we'll be talking about. Uh, it, it's possible that there are camera systems, but the, the bill doesn't speak to the specifics, specifics of those uh, systems. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Legal. Thank you. Any other questions for Legal? While we're out, Representative Grills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I go right back to what is the penalty if uh, data that is saved and then someone in that department were to use that to spy on their spouse that was mentioned earlier? How do we know that there, that there are parameters that are protecting that data? Uh, uh, Representative Grills, this bill doesn't speak to uh, penalties in those types of situations, but there may be other uh, statutory provisions that would cover that or, you know, again, action taken by the employer. Follow up? No, not now. Thank you. Okay. We are back in session. Any other questions for the sponsor? Uh, I have one. Representative Kent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, when you talked about the bill we passed a couple years ago, did it have a provision in there that the data would not be stored, that it would roll off every 30 days. I think I kind of remember that. And if that's the case, does that still hold true in this scenario? You, you got me. I don't, I can't, okay. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't that's all recall. Right, Mr. Chairman. That's yeah. okay. It's okay. All right. Thank yeah. you. We have time. Representative Powell. Uh, thank you. I, one thing I had a question about, is there any, um, requirement for any sort of notice that the camera is present to the public? Is that in any way um, part of the legislation to show the public that that's cameras present or readers present? I, I'm not sure on that, uh, Representative Powell. Chairman, I may have to go back to legal. I, um, I, I apologize. Okay. We will go out of session. Legal, you're recognized. Uh, Representative Powell, no, there's no requirement for signage uh, notifying uh, the public uh, regarding uh, the presence of the camera. Do you have a question for legal representative? Okay. We'll go back in session. Any other questions? Yeah, I do. You have a follow up? Just a follow up. I've, I've noticed in some other states that I've been present where these cameras are, are active. Um, you know, there's at least a kind of a notice. And I don't know, maybe that's not a best practice, but um, just a thought maybe as we move forward with this legislation to consider adding some sort of notice. I, again, I don't know if that's a best practice or not. I've just seen it in other places that have it. 
And I know um, as, as my city has sort of implemented these, that's been something that they've included um, with the readers to let the public know about those. So just a, just a thought for the sponsor. Thank you. Representative Burkhardt. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Are these similar to private? I don't, they're they're not videos. They're just license plate readers. That's that's correct. S similar they're, similar to those used in the car wash industry that just reads simply reads a, a tag, you know. And I think that's all we're talking about here. We're not talking about any video. No. Okay. Right. All right. License right. plate readers only. Okay. Yes, that sir. that was my question. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. right. Representative Wilson. Again, uh, when we had a license plate reader bill a few years ago, uh, it was just they store the license plate, right. and if there's some, uh, be on the lookout for that particular plate. If it's a silver alert, that's the only time it will pop up on, to law enforcement. Um, and also, again, to be clear, cities can already do this. They just cannot do it on state highways without TDOT's permission. All we're doing is making it an uh, easier application process for the cities to work with TDOT to put them on a state highway inside the municipality. Thank and you, it, and it brings in more <laughs> competitors, if you will. Yes. So it will uh, drive yeah, vendors, down the costs, yeah. as uh, sure. Chairman Lowell said, for uh, right. uh, the cities. Thank That's you. Great. Chairman Cron Conkrell. I think, and this this may be a question for legal, but I mean, I'm just and just kind of glancing through the bill again. Where does it say that it's just license plate readers? I mean, I, so, I mean, I, I see in section, sorry, stand by section two. Um, this is on page one of the bill. Um, the Department of Transportation is authorized but not required to permit the installation of surveillance cameras operated by law enforcement agencies. I, so, I mean, may, maybe just, I don't know who would be best to 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 clarify that, but where does it say only license plate readers? Without objection, we'll go out of session and ask legal. We're out of session. Legal, you're recognized. Uh, Representative Cochran, uh, you're correct. It does not actually say license plate readers. Um, it says surveillance cameras. Um, but, again, my understanding is that, and the sponsor can speak to this uh, better, but my understanding is that these are for license plate readers, which is a type of surveillance camera. So it could be used more broadly if that's what, uh, um, if law local law enforcement had the resources to, uh, to implement such a system and operate such a system. Follow up with legal? I don't guess, I'll, I'll wait till we go back. Okay. Back in session, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Uh, we, I, I tell you, if, if there's, uh, if this is, uh, and this could be creating an itch for some, uh, that that word surveillance. We could, uh, if allowed, I can come back uh, next week if uh, we could take a roll and and bring a bring an amendment and uh, be able to to strike that that word out with a replacement if we needed to do that. If people would be feel more comfortable about it. I wouldn't have a problem with that or objection unless you, Chairman, would. Uh, let's finish the list here, if I may. Uh, Representative Powers. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And to the sponsor, can uh, these be used to direct a drone strike on a vehicle uh, if needed? A, a drone strike. A drone strike. <laughs> I don't know. We had that bill last night. Yeah. I just <laughs> I'm not sure. Thank you, though. Representative Rudd. I wanted to clarify one thing. I was told yesterday that it would not, but from what legal just said, it could possibly, could a facial recognition software also be authorized by this, or is it, or is it strict? I was told yesterday he wouldn't, but is it? I was just wondering. You want to answer that? <laughs> we'll go out of session again. Legal, you reckon? Again, Representative Rudd, it, this speaks to surveillance cameras as far as to the specific type of cameras that are being used. Um, it doesn't speak to that. Again, it speaks to, let's see. 
The Department of Transportation is authorized but not required to permit the installation of surveillance cameras operated by local law or operated by law enforcement agencies on federal interstate highways and state roads as a non-highway use of the highway right-of-way for purpose of aiding in criminal investigations or searches for missing or endangered persons. And that these cameras are not used to enforce or monitor state or local traffic violations or issue citations for such violations. Um, now, as far as, so that's uh, the parameters um, from which these uh, camera and camera systems uh, operate. We'll go back in session. Yeah. Mr. Chair, may I, may I request a roll then and be able to come back? Without objection, this bill roll one week. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. But don't go away. No. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm opening up my next notebook. <laughs> item number four, House Bill 765. I have a motion and a second. Yeah, and we do have and an amendment, Chairman. We have an amendment, I believe. And uh, check and see if 5139 works for us. That's what I have. Do I have a motion okay. second on the amendment? All righty. All in this... favor of the amendment, let me put the amendment on the bill. All, right, All in favor, you. say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The amendment's on the bill. You recognize. I promise that this should go much quicker. <laughs> we, uh, out of Fentress County, it's a, it's actually a local. Uh, uh, we have uh, a resolution here, actually, uh, Representative Butler and I together, since we share Fentress County, we've been given resolution by the county commission up there in allowing uh, ATVs and, and other off-road off uh, vehicles to uh, travel on a section of road, total actually of 1.9 on state highways. Uh, we have highway 150, highways 154 and a very short distance on uh, Highway 297. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, entertain any questions. Any questions for the sponsor? I guess my question would be, you've uh, talked to safety about this and they're good with it. Safety is, uh, yes, sir. That, okay. that is correct. Safety has worked with us and I want to appreciate, I want to say, convey thanks to safety for uh, working with us on this. Okay. Without objection, we're voting on House Bill 765. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. I have it. Your bill goes to calendar Thank you. rules, sir. Thank you, chairman and members. Item number five by Representative Littleton. Thanks for your patience, Chair Lady. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. I believe you have an amendment. I do. It is 4755. That's what I have. Let's put the amendment on the bill. All in favor of adding the amendment to the bill, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Amendment's on the bill, and you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as amended, this authorizes a minor who has been issued a motorcycle learner's permit and has completed a certified motorcycle education course approved by the Department of Safety to operate a motorcycle without limitations on the distance from the minor's home if the minor is accompanied by and under the direct supervision of a parent or legal guardian who also uh, is operating a motorcycle and holds a valid Class M license. You've heard the explanation from the sponsor. Any questions? Question has been called. All in favor of House Bill 1101 say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Your bill goes to count and rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Chairman and members. Thank you. Uh, House Bill number uh, 485, item number six. Chairman Boyd is with us this morning. And I believe we have an amendment, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee, I actually have two amendments. I have one that was put on in subcommittee. Uh, and that is drafting code 3950 uh, that I, I need to adopt. That changes the date. That's what I have, 3950. Okay, we have a motion on that amendment. All in favor of adding it, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. 3950 amendment is on the bill, and you have a second. And, and Mr. Chairman, that drafting code is 5166, and it rewrites the bill, Mr. Chairman. That's that's what I have. We have a motion to second on that amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. I have it. The amendment is on the bill, and you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Members uh, in Wilson County in the summer of 2020, uh, we had a couple that is were just pillars of the community, and they were uh, stopped uh, on a main highway with their blinker on to turn into a friend's house, and they were rear-ended 
by someone that was texting and driving. Uh, Mr. Conrad, Mr. Eddie Conrad was killed in the accident and Ms. Jocelyn spent many months uh, in intensive care and ultimately in rehab. And uh, was a, she did survive the accident and she and her family have made it a, a goal in their life to, to, to try to bring awareness to texting and driving and, and, uh, and they bought billboards around the state and they just have a big movement uh, in that direction. So I committed to carrying the bill called the, uh, the Eddie Conrad Act. And what it would do uh, is it would increase the points for uh, someone, a repeat offender of texting and driving for someone under the age of 18. It would add seven points to their driving record if it is a repeat offense. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll take any questions. Okay, you've heard the explanation from the sponsor. Any questions? Representative Rudd. We, uh, we already have a, um, the hands-free bill that uh, Representative Hoskall passed a few years ago in place. Does this, other than adding points, does this re further restrict? Because right now, if you're at a complete halt in your car, you can make a call or temporarily, as long as the car is not moving. And also, if you have your cell phone in a holder where it's not on your body, you can dial and and push up a, a number or something while you're moving now under the current law, but you're not holding it and it's not touching your body. Would this change any of that? You recognize? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no, it, it doesn't get into the details of anything like that. It simply deals with the penalty that would be assessed for a minor uh, if they're if they were a repeat offender. So it doesn't address any of the things that you're allowed to do. It just says if you get convicted of this and it's the second offense, you're going to have some points on your record. Okay. Chair Lady Hazelwood. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank the sponsor for bringing this bill. I was a co-sponsor along with Chairman Hulse Claw of the Dump, Text, and Drive bill. Um, it saved lives in the state. We need to do more because people are still disobeying that law on a regular basis. And I think our young people are some of the, the worst offenders, and that's what this, this bill is getting to. We had a tragic situation on Signal Mountain a few years ago. A young lady who was texting and driving down the mountain um, was killed in a one-car accident. She just simply lost control of her car because she was on her phone. And, I, you know, young people think they're invincible. So I think anything that we can do to discourage them from that kind of behavior is, um, is a step in the right direction. So thank you. Response. Any other questions? If, if not, we're ready to vote. Question has been called. We're voting on House Bill 485. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed nay. Ayes have it. Sir, your bill goes to finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Committee. Down to item number seven by Representative Holsclaw. Bill number 769. I have a motion and a second. I believe you have an amendment, sir. Yes, I do. First, it pleases me that uh, so many members are knowledgeable of our hands-free Bill, <laughs> would you happen to sponsor that bill? I may have sponsored I that. I thought you might have. <laughs> what Thank is your you. amendment code, sir? Yes, sir. We do have uh, an amendment which is drafting code six zero one zero. That's what I have. And I will explain the amendment to you. Basically, what what we've got here is so the current law says you must have a muffler in good working order, and there's no defined parameters around that. So what we went, we backed up, we put some defined parameters around over 95 decibels that can be measured by an instrument, which makes it very definitive. And then we've also, for the benefit, we've excluded farmers and implementation and motorcycles because we think that maybe even motorcycles, it's super loud. It helps provide them a little bit of safety. Okay. And with that, I renew my motion. Okay. We uh, need a motion and a second on the amendment. Have a motion and a second on the amendment. All in favor of adding the amendment, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The amendment is on the bill, and you heard the explanation. Uh, just for clarification, if if I may, there may be other questions, but as I understand it, this the bill that you have brought just clarifies what's currently in law. Is that correct? That is correct. It does not change the law. It just clarifies the, it. Well, the only one, there's one wording change in there that it says in the code. It goes through the noise and all that, and it says, and annoying smoke we change that to or oh okay that's the only thing so it's a clarifying it's always good to clarify a law that's ambiguous so uh, that's just my two cents any questions for the sponsor from the committee 
Seeing none, we're ready to vote on House Bill 769. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Your bill goes to calendar rule, sir. Thank you, Chairman Committee. Thank you. House Bill number eight by Representative Travis 616. So Representative, you are recognized. And I believe you have, do I have, did I get a motion on the bill? Okay. Short memory. Uh, I believe you have an amendment, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 5894. That's what I have. The bill. have a motion on the amendment. Do I have a second? I have a second on the amendment. We're voting on the amendment. All in favor of adding it to the bill, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Amendment is on the bill, and you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Um, I stand here today um, with a heavy heart because shortly after 7 a.m. on the morning of November the 10th, 2021, Grace Eleanor Mitchell, age 17, collided with the rear of a logging truck on Highway 111, and this resulted in Grace's untimely death. And to make this bill, it, it makes this safer for log trucks because you know log trucks have an extended load over the bed of the truck and over the bumper sometimes 14 to 16 feet. We've walked, we worked with a logging company and amended this bill where it's good with everybody. But this bill right here, it will do um, two things. It will, um, it will have a light, an amber blinking light or an LED strobe light that will be attached to the end of the load. And it also will have two red flags or two orange flags, which are in good, good condition invisible while the truck is loaded. And if this passed, it will take effect October the 1st, 2023. Any questions for the sponsor? Chairman Grills. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that's a, that's a pretty sad story there. You tell uh, Representative Travis. Um, just out of curiosity, if you don't mind, would you tell us, though, if this has anything to do with, like, storm cleanup or anything, say like when you're using the uses the word pulpwood or explain to us what exactly pulpwood is it's log and pulpwood you know like you see the trucks going down the road that's carrying the pine logs and the pulpwoods taking them to the pup store where we get our paper and all that you know you don't see many in nashville but you see a lot in my rural area i pass three or four every time i come into work follow up thank you mr chairman this would have nothing to do though with, the, with like counties and their storm cleanup or anything of that nature uh, trees and different things hanging out the back of a uh, like a tornado that just come through and they're trying to get everything cleaned up this would have nothing to do with that and this is yes sir this is uh saying it's transporting a load of logs of pulp wood that protrudes at least four feet behind the truck so is that saying it would not affect uh storm cleanup from well if a truck has those logs that's from a storm pickup that's hanging four feet or, mu uh, or more out of the truck, then I would assume that it would pertain to that. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Representative Towns. Mr. Chairman, I'm about to say the same thing. I mean, it's not dealing with a particular situation or scenario. It's dealing with truck transporting logs and, and extensions, so it should make sure that any of that activity extending four feet and beyond have those identifying um, equipment on the back so people can see that stuff. So it's not dealing with any situation, earthquake, uh, tidal wave or whatever, it's just dealing with transporting logs. Transporting logs yeah. or pulp wood, yes sir. Up, 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 up. Thank you, sir. Chair Lady Hazelwood. Thank you, um, and I remember this situation, Representative Travis, it was in our neck of the woods, and uh, I think it was a foggy, um, I think there was some weather issue involved. So just want to clarify, you mentioned the lights, the, either the amber light or the strobe light, and was it and flags, not or flags? It, it would is require flags. Okay. It is and Thank flags. you. Representative Travis, uh, I, I see you have a guest uh, that's on the list to testify. Do they still no, desire to testify? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, I should have told you yesterday, that's okay. but she that's did okay. not make the trip. That's okay. Any other questions for the sponsor? The question has been called. All in favor of House Bill 616, say aye. 
Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Your bill goes to Calden Rules. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Committee. Item number nine, House Bill 345. We have a motion and a second on House Bill 345. Representative Sparks. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Uh, House Bill 345 extends a renewal of a license plate in Tennessee from 12 months to 24 months. I sir. see, sir, that you have two amendments. You want to run them both or just one? Um, just the one, 4101, sir. 4101. And if I could, Chairman, Excuse for the record. Me just a minute while I confer with legal. We're having a discussion about the amendment. The research analyst is going to come down and confer with you, sir. Oh, we do. Yes, we do. We do have a new one, Chairman. Yes, 59, 5910, sir. That's what I have. Yes, is sir. that the one you want to move? Yes, sir, please. Okay. All right. All in favor of adding amendment number 5910 to the bill, say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. The amendment's on the bill, and you're recognized. Yes, sir. For, for the record, I, I, for the uh, County Fish Association, want to mention section 13B the owner or leasee is not entitled to a refund from the fee of the Department of Revenue or County for issuing this registration. This is something they really want us to put in this piece of legislation. Thank you, sir. Any questions to the sponsor? Seeing none, without objection, we're voting on House Bill 345. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Your bill goes to finance. Sir. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, committee. Item number 10 has been rolled one week. Item number 11, uh, it's got my name on it. <laughs> we will hand the gavel to uh, Vice Chairman Vital. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next on the calendar committee is House Bill 137, sponsored by Chairman Howell. Motion. We have a motion and a second, properly motioned. Chairman Howell, I understand you have several amendments. Let's get to these amendments on the bill first. So uh, do the amendments make the bill? Uh, yes, they do. Okay, amendment one. Number one is 6013 is what I have. That is correct. Uh, we have a motion in the second um, on amendment one to House Bill 137. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Amendment one is added to the bill. Uh, we also have amendment two. Drafting code? 6204. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Amendment number two is added. And I have the third one, sir, is 6361. Okay, that is untimely, however. Yes. Uh, 6361. Would you explain that to us, please? 6361 was untimely filed, but uh, at the will of the com committee, uh, this was brought to me by um, Chairman uh, Ryan Williams, and uh, he found out late that a, a social service agency in his district works with the homeless, uh, would like to have a specialty license plate, and uh, so that they can generate some funds to benefit the homeless in his district. So. I told him we would see if the committee would accept an untime, untimely filed amendment. Motion to take the untimely filed amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Added to the amendment. We're now back on the bill as amended. Uh, Chairman Howell, would you give a brief summary of your bill? This is the annual transportation omnibus bill for specially licensed plates. And now that it's amended, there's about 37 amendments on there that... Uh, make the bill. I'll be glad to read all these amendments, but I doubt if the committee wants to sit here and listen to that. But uh, with that, I'll just renew my motion. And I'll, I would also ask, uh, Mr. Chairman, that all the amendments be rolled into one bill. We will move all those into House Bill 137. Any other questions on House Bill 137? If not, I have a motion. We'll vote on that bill. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 137 is passed. Move to calendar and rules. Excuse me, finance, ways, and means. Thank you. Uh, next, Chairman Howell, you have House Bill 138. Motion and a second. Properly motioned. Chairman Howell, I understand you also have an amendment on that. This amendment makes the bill 6011, sir. 
That is correct. Motion to second. Let's vote on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The amendment is adopted. We are now on the bill as amended. Chairman Howell, uh, I think you will give us a brief uh, summary on that <laughs> bill also. Again, I'll be glad to read the whole thing. But uh, this is, the, again, the omnibus bill uh, for the Transportation Committee that uh, names highways, roads, and bridges in the state of Tennessee. And with that, I move passage. Do we have any questions from the members? Question's been called. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The bill moves to finance ways and means. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's an honor to work with you. Thank you. <laughs> a very efficient job. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes. Yeah, we're going to give you a raise. A little that Debbie Kate. <laughs> you have some of those in your office. Go by and see the chairman. He'll fix you up. That concludes our calendar. Any questions, comments from the committee? Again, we want to thank our visitors for coming and watching your, uh, your government at work. Sometimes it's not pretty, but we get it done. But thank you for being here. Do I hear a motion? We are adjourned.